Oh, I bet you never thought I'd start to know the cause. By the way, welcome aboard with a beer in my hand. Friends, I'll never forget the year was probably 1994, 95. I first met Dr. A.V. Costantini with the World Health Organization, and he was talking at this symposium in Canada that in fact gout is a beer drinker's disease. And my dad had this horribly, my dad loved his beer. And it's so fascinating to me to remember back because he had an envelope on his desk because he was talking to all, this do all these doctors and me. I was probably the only non-doctor there. And he said, gout is truly a uric acid disease, right? Too much uric acid. And then he picked up that envelope and he said, I have $1,000 in this envelope to any of you doctors who can teach me how uric acid is made by the human body. Okay, but gout really exists. Where does uric acid come from? Let's discuss that and a whole lot more on today's Know the Cause. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. So I was reading online the other day, examiner.com, look at this, beer drinking doubles gout risk. This is fascinating. In a research study performed by the medical journal Lancet, more than 47,000 male medical professionals, doctors, 47,000 male medical professionals with no history of gout were followed for up to 12 years. And in that period, men who drank the most alcohol daily had twice the risk of developing the disorder as men who didn't drink. Beer drinkers increase their risk of gout by 50% for every daily beer, while those who drank uh, hard liquor increased their risk only by 15% by each daily drink they had. So we gotta figure out, guys, what is it about, number one, men are beer drinkers. I probably got 40-year-old beer still in my body. I quenched my pain when I got back from Vietnam with beer. They didn't have, you know, all those drugs that they give to kids now coming home from war, thank God. Uh, we tended to solve our problems elsewhere, right? And beer was my drink of choice. Uh, and I never really liked the taste of it. But I got through it. I got through my years of doing that. My dad drank a lot of beer. He'd come home from work and have a couple of beers every night. I can always remember that. And dad had gout. Dad's gout was so bad, dad eventually lost his femur bone and his hip bone and his leg to cancer. And do you know he would have phantom pain of gout laying in bed. Sometimes at night I could hear him when I was younger. I uh, hear him just, oh, you know, just his leg hurt so bad, his gout hurt so bad that if the sheet touches your toes, it hurts. Why do you suppose men have this more than women? Men drink more beer than women, okay? So I did a little study here. I first put this up in the year 2012. Some of you may be new viewers and you may have missed this, but let's go back to the beginning, kind of study it. Gout, could it be fungus? And I put up there, it is fungus. Gout used to be called the beer drinker's disease. Well, welcome four years later, it's now the beer drinker's disease again. Dr. Garab, the father of gout, stated this, and it's kind of in Old English, 1856, wow. There is not truth in medicine better established than the fact that the use of fermented liquors is the most powerful of all predisposing causes of gout. Nay, so powerful that it may be a question, uh, it may be a question whether gout would ever have been known to mankind had such beverages never been indulged in. Okay, he was saying booze and gout go hand in hand, right? It is published that when the human body breaks down chemicals called purines, amino acids, it produces uric acid. I disagree, uh, but I do agree that too much uric acid in the blood causes gout. Gout is a complex disorder. It's more prevalent among men and afflicts women more commonly after menopause. <laughs> Duh. Men typically have a higher uric acid level in their blood than women. Let's take a sidebar here. Let's just go on uh, and let me tell you something. <clears throat> when you went in for a SMAC test or a chemistry blood test, one of the chemistries they tested is uric acid, right? Comes out 4.0 or less, okay, no gout, no uric acid uh, crystalline in your bloodstream. And yet Dr. Costantini said, we don't make uric acid. Why is it being tested in everyone's blood? Is zero normal? And over that might be due to fungus? I think so. 
Okay, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so purine foods, again, what do I put up there? What is this show called? Know the cause. Purine foods, think fungus, because look at number one. Mushrooms are a high purine food. It is possible that even moderate regular beer consumption factors into the risk for developing gout in middle-aged men, possibly reflecting the relatively high purine content of beer, says the American College of Rheumatology a long, long time ago. And look at the bottom, penicillin-induced gout is documented. Okay, what do we do with this? Could it be a fungal disorder? You know my feeling on this, right? You've been with me, some of you, for 15 years. Mushrooms, gee, mushrooms aren't a vegetable. They're a fungus, and they're high in purines. So we eat a lot of mushrooms, we draw our blood, and we say, wow, no wonder you have gout. You have high fungus in your bloodstream. Beer, did you know that the mold is called penicillium, and the byproduct, or the mycotoxin, is called penicillin? The mold or the yeast is called brewer's yeast. The byproduct is called alcohol. So you get a lot of this fungus in your body. We take blood and say, no wonder you have gout. You have a high uric acid or high purine level. I don't think so. I think it's a high fungus level, okay? Let's go to this slide, uric acid, think fungus. It isn't known if we humans can make uric acid without purine breakdown. We humans don't make uric acid as a part of our normal physiology. What is known and documented is that fungi, including fusarium, we talk about this on Know the Cause, cyclosporin, yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and even penicillium produce uric acid. All drugs used to treat gout are antifungal drugs, further providing the fungal cause of gout, says Dr. Costantini. And he states that fermented beverages cause gout, yet children and animals do get gout when exposed to fungus. What fungus? How about house mold and how about antibiotics? Okay, that's something to sleep on tonight. Think about that, the fungus link to gout. Stay away from fungal foods, watch what happens. Don't go away. 15 years ago, Doug Coffin and I began talking about the dangers of fungus and Doug's duo comprised of NSC 100 MG glucan 60 count plus NSC caprylic acid was conceived. If you want to nutritionally help your immune cells and digestive organs find and kill fungus, eliminate mycotoxins, and reestablish the good bacterial ratio you need, Doug's Duo is for you. Fungus is in your food, in the air, and in your body now. If you don't get the fungus, it will get you. That's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You want your immune cells to enable fungus avoidance and to kill fungus? And Doug Steele is a major step in the right direction. Join the thousands who use Doug Steele, NSC 100 Immunition Glucan 60 Count and NSC Caprylic Acid and save big bucks with a giant 50% discount. Okay, I know what you're thinking now. Doug, that's a lot of education, a lot of good stuff. But has anyone ever really benefited from your program when they had gout? This man, Clay, says, um, yeah. I'm 53 years old, and eight years ago I was diagnosed with gout. And it was the most painful thing I'd ever gone through. It would last for two weeks. And I went to the doctor and he gave me these pills, and they worked for about five years. And then on year five, it stopped working. And I asked the doctor, can you send me some more pills? Have these pills gone bad? And he said, what pills? And I said, the pills you gave me five years ago. He goes, I gave you about six months worth. You should be done by now. And I said, no, I only take it once a year. And it, can you just give me new pills? And he said, no, I need to see you. Well, I didn't want to go see him again. My foot was that big. But I had to go see him. And he made me wait for 30 minutes. And then he made me wait for 30 more minutes. And finally, I went up to the receptionist and said, just send my records to my house. We're done. I'm leaving. And as I was driving home from the hospital, I've been blessed my whole life. And the guardian angels sent John to call me. And he called me and said, we're doing something out here at Rockwall that's really exciting. You need to come check it out. So I went out there to see John. And I limped up with this big foot. And uh, they asked me what was wrong. And I said, um, I tripped or fell in a hole. And they said, no, you have gout. And I said, what are you all doing out here? And it was all about know the cause and all about treating fungus and, and eating good food. So I talked, I met Doug, and he gave me the phase one diet, 
And I went home, immediately went on the phase one diet, and I got some supplements. I got some olive leaf extract, and I got some probiotics, and I got some oil of oregano. And I, the funny thing, when I, when I was talking with Doug, before I left, I kept waiting for him to say, and buy my magic elixir, 1995, it'll cure everything. But he never did that. He never tried to sell me anything. And within three days, my gout pain was gone. And within five days, the swelling on my foot was gone. But I was so excited, I stayed on the diet, and I had several other minor problems, like I had fingernail fungus, look, I could be a hand model. And I had back pains, and I was reading. I couldn't see when I read. I'm the last person in my family to not use glasses to read. But after being on the phase one diet for two weeks, my back pain went away. I read like this now. Uh, my hands, like I said, they all cleared up and it has completely changed my life. I played basketball in college and it caused me to have lower back pains and I also love to play golf and I can only play one day and then I have to take three days off because of my lower back pain. And even in one round of golf, toward the 14th or 15th hole, my back's starting to hurt and I just kinda gotta limp it on in. Well, two weeks after I'd been on the diet, my back pain is gone. Um, in fact, I'm hitting it further than I've ever hit it in my life, even though I'm 53. I know technology has a lot to do with that, but I'm making a full turn, and I'm not sore at the end of the round. In fact, I could play every day. My wife wouldn't like that, but I could play every day. The bottom line is, I just hope this helps at least one person out there. Um, to me, it was easy, and to me, the results were very quick. If you just know the cause, eat the right foods, exercise and diet, you too are gonna feel like I feel, which is pain-free. Hi, I'm Susie Cohen, author of The 24-Hour Pharmacist, and I only recommend Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. You see, most probiotic products contain billions of freeze-dried bacteria, but that can aggravate bloating and gas. Dr. O'Hara's provides only live, beneficial bacteria, plus their prebiotic nutrition. It supports noticeable digestive comfort. I believe in Dr. O'Hara's consistent results. It takes guts to feel great. Which of my books fit you? Are you or a loved one suffering with allergies, arthritis, intestinal problems, or depression? In the Fungus Link One book, the diet is there, the antifungals are there, and so is the information on those disorders. If you have watched me for any period of time, you know that what I believe is it's not so much the mold, mildew, and fungus as our ability to fight it. That's what keeps us alive. Nurse Jenny says exactly the same thing as she talks about this in her Cancer Connection. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with the Cancer Connection. Our bodies can make around 10,000 cancer cells a day. But if our immune system is strong, it sweeps them up at night and throws them away. The immune system uses melatonin, the sleep hormone in that process. That's why melatonin is also called the anti-cancer hormone. Melatonin production peaks around 3 a.m. So to maximize your melatonin production, sleep in a dark room because when your eyes sense the light, your body stops making this valuable hormone. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. Wow, I like this. What does the Center for Disease Control say about the flu? You literally, when you read this, you need this. It's unbelievable, friends. It's eight pages, it's so tiny. If they're so proud of the flu shot, God bless them, folks, why don't they make it big print? Maybe 12 font instead of five. You know, it's amazing. Well, we don't have enough paper, we're killing trees with all the paper. Come on, guys, give it to it like it is. You know, uh, give it to us like it is. Tell us what's this flu shot has. In lieu of the flu shot every year for since I've known Frank and I learned about beta-glucan, I've taken beta-glucan, NSC 100, the green bottle. Um, Frank, thank you for joining us today. Mark is Frank's son. Mark is Vice President of Operations and Mark, I think I want to start with you here. This is, careful here, it's so intricate the way you make beta-glucan. Folks, that's where beta-glucan has to fit onto your cell, and here's beta-glucan. 
Most of it doesn't fit. It must be shrunken down and shaved off and boom, there you go. This is the genius that has done that in conjunction with other people. Tell me a little bit, Mark, about operations. Do you guys have a relationship with the University of, of uh, Nevada School of Medicine now? We do, Doug. It's been at least 17 years of yeah. ongoing research, joint projects of, of understanding what beta-glucan does, how to make it better, and especially uh, working out the interaction with beta-glucan in our immune cells. You, you hinted on it, you know, it's a beta-glucan particulate receptor site. We've found ways to make that the most effective, and that's what differentiates us from the other sources of beta-glucan, not only in the, in, in the world, but other, other products that are commercially available. And it's so interesting, Mark, because you can go in a health food store and maybe pick some up for $19.95, and it's the large particulate. You know, you want it to cleave on to that receptor site on the Correct. cell. Now, Frank, for those who don't know, Number one, welcome to Know the Cause. Frank has been a guest on this show for many years. For those who don't know what beta-glucan is, give us the 10 cent dissertation. Beta-glucan amps up your immune response nutritionally, and it's an immune modulator or normalizer. The reason it works so well with colds and flu, those are respiratory illnesses, that's something seeking to harm you that's non-cell. The key, in addition, you can take the flu shots and so forth, but we have 20 million kids missing school, 70 million job days, just the cold. So the key is to keep your own immune system, one-fifth of your body, 20 trillion cells that God created for you, was designed to keep you from getting what you don't want to have. So if you will take this, this normalizes your immune response. What does the flu vaccine does? It comes in and takes a little bit of flu, they make antibodies, and then when you, it comes into your body, it attacks it. But if your immune response is already on go, it can make those same antibodies. It makes it when the first time something comes in, it makes antibodies, and then it responds. Now, this is good even with the flu shot. I want to emphasize mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. as what you call an adjuvant. Mm -hmm. So it comes in, amps up your immune response, be it colds, be it flu. Your immune cells are the key, but this puts them on go, puts them on ready, and the it works. I, it sure does. <laughs> I've got so many years under my belt not getting the flu during the flu season, but it says something here as I got my magnifying glass out. They will tell you on the news that if you're older, you need this flu shot. And this says it doesn't really work as well if you're older. And friends, it's, it's, I'm just you know, regurgitating what it says here, the Center for Disease Control. You don't get to see this, by the way, unless you get on their website. You never see the package insert, only your doctor does. What I'm telling you today is get some free. They'll send you this out, no charge, uh, no postage handling, anything, um, and try it for 10 days. And Mark, you said that people like it so much they then call and order the bottle. Quite often somebody will take the free sample that, that we so generously give out to new customers and they'll say that, I feel better, I'm doing better. What can I do to get more of that? You know what, Frank, we have a lineup here I'd like to show people. This is your daily multiple. This is your respiratory formula with so many good things Lots for lungs and airways. This is the small dose, three milligram beta-glucan, and here is the 10 milligram beta-glucan. You're sending out the big boy, the 10 milligram beta-glucan. During flu season, if you're taking the three milligram, one change you might want to make is amping it up a little bit. I happen to know from talking with Connie many years ago what the cost of beta-glucan is. Um, if you're paying $19.95 for it, folks, you may have an inferior product. You'll have to pay a little more. But he has a club set up that is absolutely amazing, almost a quarter off everything you buy there anyway. Gentlemen, so good to see you. Thank you for all you do for Doug and Ruth's health and all of our viewers' health. It's really good. Beta glue can. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mark. Good to see you again, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Don't go away. I'll be back with more. I think for those people who are very active and don't like to take a lot of pills, uh, the two-a-day would be perfect for them. This is a multivitamin formula based on the ideal intake of all these wonderful vitamins and minerals that are going to optimize your health way more than a generic multivitamin will. Take one in the morning, one in the evening, boom, they're done, and it covers you know, a multitude of different uh, things that will help you stay healthy. Order now for the two-per-day vitamin, one month supply for $8.25. Uh, welcome back, friends, and thank you. Uh, now, in the opening of the show, I expounded a little bit on these molds, mildew, and mycotoxins, and let me just refresh you. Certain fungi, species of fungi, make a byproduct 
that is poisonous. Since fungi, the study of fungus is called mycotoxicology or mycology, uh, the byproduct is a mycofungus toxin, poison, a fungal poison. And sometimes they wait to spew these poisonous gases or liquids or solids until they're inside our body. So it's kind of devastating uh, because it wants shelter, it wants heat, fungus loves heat. Uh, it wants to be fed. When we have a fungus on board, we tend to crave certain foods, sugars, potatoes, pasta, alcohol, etc. Uh, we can't seem to get enough of it, and that's because the fungus becomes the dominant cell in our body. Here's our cell, and here's a fungal cell, and once you have this fungus growing on board, it wants our cells out of the way, and it becomes dominant. Isn't that amazing, the way this works? And so uh, diet, we begin craving what the fungus needs to survive. Well, I worked with a, uh, a real prominent ear, nose, and throat guy when I got back in Vietnam. I was in Los Angeles. His name was Howard Gottschalk. Uh, those of you who are operating room nurses or technicians or doctors, know about the Gottschalk retractors, right? So that was Howard Gottschalk that developed that. Maybe the nasostat. It was a nasal tampon that fit in the nose. You'd fill the bulb of it with water, and it would put pressure on a bleeding artery in the nose and stop it. I mean, it's amazing. Operating rooms still have the nasostat, the Gottschalk nasostat. Brilliant guy. I have had the honor of working with some of the best. But Dr. Gottschalk had this one female patient who kept coming in with ears, you know, it had, it had bleed in the canal of the ear, and we couldn't figure it out, you know, and uh, what are you doing, what is that? So he cultured it, and it was a fungus growing in her ear. I remember this, this was 1970s, and we could not figure it out. So with these patients, doctors and nurses watching right now, you have to take a very, very careful history. I'll explain that as we go along. Where does this mold grow? We talk about that all the time on Know the Cause. But look at this slide. The three major genera of uh, mycotoxin-producing fungi are aspergillus, we talk about that, fusarium, and penicillium. We don't talk enough about that, but I'll do more segments on that. Each is a sac-forming fungi, right? It can grow a lump in your body. It's called an ascomycete. Now, this is the relevant sentence. The major U.S. crops affected are corn, peanuts, go with me here, go with me, and there's the word cotton. Let me tell you what we learned from his patient. Every morning she washed her hair and she would take a Q-tip out of the same bag. She bought a bag of a thousand of them. And apparently some of that cotton was impregnated with a mycotoxin. Once there's a little scratch there, and she may have put her finger in and scratched, this stuff grows and grows and grows. So antifungal drops were used very successfully in her case. Now, if it just stopped there, I'd say, okay, that's great, because not very often do you have cotton impregnated with this mold. Or do you? Have you ever heard of toxic shock syndrome, the tampon syndrome in young women? Folks, you've got to take this into consideration because these young girls have cancer-like symptoms from using a tampon, and some of them it's a fatal reaction. So I want you to watch this carefully, okay? The three major genera of mycotoxin, that's poison-producing fungi, are aspergillus, fusarium, and there's that word. Penicillium. What did we learn in the opening of today's show? Penicillium is the mold. The mycotoxin it makes that's not real safe is called penicillin. Each are a sac-forming fungus, and this is really important, folks, because sac-forming, wait a minute, doesn't cancer grow in a lump? You know where I'm going with this. The major U.S. crops affected, you always hear me say corn, you always hear me say peanut, you never hear me say cotton. And yet, these breathe, these genes breathe because they're cotton, cotton underwear, cotton socks, etc. Cotton's a good fabric, but sometimes, like that lady, their cotton is impregnated with a mold. How else would this impact someone? Watch this, because this is scary. Cotton, do mycotoxins cause toxic shock syndrome? A Texas woman was found, unexpected, found an unexpected substance growing on an unused tampon. It was mold. She dropped it on the floor accidentally, and it popped out of its applicator, and look, isn't that ugly? Mold. This is in March of 2012, although the offending mold was never publicized. An Egyptian study one time found that 87% of cottonseed is impregnated with aspergillus fungi, which makes the poison aflatoxin B1. All I'm going to tell you, folks, is this. 
You know how many young girls have gotten this cancer-like disease that doctors don't know the cause of. We have no idea what causes toxic shock syndrome. The similarities are amazing. Gee, all these girls that ended up sick, dying, or dead use tampons. Hmm, I wonder what it could be in the tampon that induced this disease. It's not okay to put mold inside your body. Okay, and here's a very fortunate young girl who dropped this on the floor, right? Thank you, Jesus. Drops it on the floor. What does she see? Mold. And folks, look, I'm not going to go into the specifics or the politics of this, but I think this is pretty rare. So is toxic shock syndrome. I think every physician in the world should be told if a girl has toxic shock syndrome, bring in the box of tampons and let them examine them. Cotton is a common ingredient in our everyday life. It's one thing to cause a little ouch, a little exudate, a little itching and crusting in the ear. It's a whole other thing to have your 20-year-old daughter die of a disease that may be mold-induced. I hope there are doctors watching. I hope you folks watching call all of your loved ones, all of your daughters and granddaughters, and say, look, just be very careful. I don't know how these things work, but you've got to be able to peek inside there and make sure that mold isn't growing on it. I trust you've learned a lot. Thank you for joining us today. I'll be right back with more of Know the Cause. Barb and Frank Long of Long Life Unlimited are distributors of one of the best home cleaning degreaser products in the country called Orange TKO with Delimony. Also, they feature many products in the Rafa Remedy line. Try this amazing product on your skin today. They also can serve you with 300 other products, many that are featured on Know the Cause. Ask for the Know the Cause special now by calling the number or logging on to longlifeunlimited.com. Remember, it's God given, people approved, and doctor recommended. Which of my books fit you? How many people do we know suffering with kidney diseases, skin problems, postpartum depression? All those topics are covered along with the phase one, phase two diet and natural and prescriptive antifungals in the book, The Fungus Link, volume three. You know, it's such a small, unassuming bottle, beta-glucan, NSC, but boy, what's in this is amazing. Did you hear Nurse Jenny today talk about not so much the germ, fungus, bacteria, virus, as our ability to handle the germ, and that's called immunity, right? That's what the NSC company has specialized in for a long time. What Mark and Frank were talking about on today's show is really putting glasses on your immune system. We call that modulating your immune system. And boy, when you travel, boom. You know, it's just it's one of those supplements you have to take with you. Great, great supplement. Thank you, Mark, for joining us today, and thank you, Frank. Also, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Kind of interesting about gout being intimately linked with fungus, the beer drinker's disease. Really, beer is yeast. Why not? Folks, it doesn't stop there. The road just continues from cancer to cystic fibrosis to Alzheimer's to asthma, and it goes on 